This is live. This is a, a bit of an experiment. I want to show you a megalith. This is a this is strap usual cardinal points. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, this is fairly built up area. A lot of people live around here. It's very desirable. So it's good that it survived. And here it is. Here. Now, hopefully you still see this. This is uh, this is what's left of it. This is the interior chamber. Now, so I, don't, I haven't been here in years, so I don't know how deep the fucker is. So oh, it's fairly deep. Okay. Now, this would be the back of the chamber here, and this would have been the entrance here. And there's still fairly sizable orthostats remaining on the sides. Now, this is called the giant's grave locally. And they're always, they're always called. Let me get through these nettles here. Good thing we don't have snakes in Ireland. They're always called giant's graves, not just in Ireland, but uh, all over the place. Just a local colloquial name. And this one first appears on the 1820 something, maybe the 23, I think it is, Grand Ordnance Survey of Ireland map. And it's marked as a giant's grave, and then it's marked again on the maps later after that. And it's the day it just then it's later was called a Cromlech, and now it's just called a megalithic site. They don't use the giant's grave, the locals still call it the giant's grave. So, this would have been the central chamber of a mound. So, over this was a mound, right? And on the 1820s tree map, I think it is. It seems to indicate that there was a circle of standing stones or boulders around the circumference of the mound, which, as you can see, it doesn't exist anymore. So you can see the chamber is very sizable. Down here, this is classic. You've got the you can't see it, but it's down there. This is the stone that always you always get on these. There, you can see it better here. There. You always get these stones on the entrance, there's often like, and this is definitely a ritualistic thing, the sort of like uh, two parts. You come in, first part here, and then a second part. Very, very common, not just in Irish uh, cromlechs, but all over the place. There's a helicopter coming in, hopefully it's not too loud. We come overhead. Anyway, it's getting very hot again. This, the summer's well and back with a vengeance. Real heat in that sun today. So here's a good a good view of it here. Now the orientation is a bit strange. It's so back front and the passage would have been down there close to where that willow tree is, so about there. It would have came down into the passage into the central chamber, probably raided by treasure hunters maybe hundreds of years ago, the Christians. If the Viking, well, the Vikings were here. They did raid Inishmurri Island, which is just behind me, uh, the monastic settlement. So they probably, it could have been them. I doubt it. It was probably just bandits or robbers. So no bodies have ever been found inside that I know of, and never been excavated. And this is not too much information on it, but you can see by the size of the passage chamber how big this thing was. It was quite substantial. The orientation, I'm sorry about this, the, the, there's a military helicopter base just up the road here. Uh, that's Knocknaray Mountain over there, the Mountain of the Moon. And uh, on top of that, behind the centre of that pine tree, is Queen Maeve's Cairn. The, the, the massive Queen Maeve's Cairn, as it's called. The gigantic cairn on the top of the mountain. So this is, not, this is obviously not orientated towards it. However, what it is orientated towards, and they may not be related because this is Neolithic and they, these other structures may be Bronze Age, is that they're definitely related to two circular enclosures, ring barrows as they call them in England, uh, fairy forts or raths as we call them here, that are just directly over that, behind that hill about 300 meters. So definitely it's aligned with that. If they're connected, I don't know. These things tend to be, then they tend to be from the Bronze Age, but some of them are from the Neolithic, and these tend to be from the Neolithic. So there's a couple of thousand years in between. 
early Neolithic now. We're talking like very, these are, this is an ancient, ancient monument, ancient structure. And uh, let me see, we're still running live. Are we still, yeah, we're still running live. And so you can see the importance of the smaller ones. Just let me get you, try and get photogenic. Oh, really? Here we go. This is the first time I've done this, so forgive me if I made a bollocks of it. I don't know if it's even working. But there, right? The smaller ones are often, in some ways, more. I enjoyed visiting them, the kind of forgotten ones, than than the the the, the big famous ones like the Queen Maeve's up on the mountain. Then I'll tell you why. Nobody ever comes to them. Nobody's ever here, and they're forgotten about. And you see, like I had to wade through all the leaves and the the undergrowth. No, so they have they have a sort of a a virginal quality about them even though like many people have been here you they're not they're just something very pleasant about finding them and uh, trying to imagine what this landscape looked would then were like the beaches just behind those trees there so it would have been a probably a heavily forested not with these Norwegian spruce but uh, heavily forested there would have been plant probably willow and hazel and there would have been plenty of oak and there's a, a hawthorn tree over there, so not a proper fairy tree. So a lot of that. And they probably would have cleared it. There's, there's some good agricultural land over there. They probably would have cleared it for that. And so, you know, you can see this thing is huge. Like that, 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 that artist out there, when I, was, when I was down here, when I was in, look how deep it is. When I was in there, that was up to my shoulder. So that's, that's like a very impressive... Uh, a very impressive monument, especially this, uh, I love this stone at the back here. They deliberately picked this stone. I bet at one time there was probably rock art on that. Uh, probably just, it's been eroded by the weather. And in terms of solstice alignments, what we're looking here, we're looking kind of southeast. So I'm, there's nothing, I'm trying to, where do we southeast? Let me see. No, it'd be kind of north. Sorry, it'd be northeast. So it'd be looking towards Ulster. So Ulster is that way. This is still, Sligo still in Connacht. So Ulster, fucking horse flies. Ulster is that way. Uh, oh, the fucker just bit me. Uh, oh, I can actually feel them getting out the knife and fork. They're bastards. Uh, that way. I want to get out of here before anymore. Uh, I don't have any cream on me. Uh, northeast. So definitely the orientation is towards Ulster. Ulster is the land of Court Cairns. And this is probably why this has been identified. Well, a strip of land across a certain parallel from this from Sligo right across to County Dundalk. Or sorry, Dundalk in County Louth, which is that way. And these are all across that latitude, line of latitude. But they are generally orientated east-west. So this was probably... You see, you hear me talk about the meaning of a giant, right? A giant isn't necessarily... The, you see, the folk memories of these places is ancient. And a giant is not necessarily a huge human being. A giant can be a giant of a man. You know, like uh, Finn McCool. He was a giant of a man. That's what they really meant by him. So this could have been a very, very important shaman or chieftain. And that's why we come to these places. Because they fire the imagination. And... They make you realise that that was built five, maybe at least 5,000 years ago by people that were just like you and me. So I hope you like this first, don't even know how to shut the thing off, this first outside broadcast and uh, thank you very much and we'll try it again if this, 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 this I don't even know if this worked.